everyone, it's Sherry Carroll for Simon Says Stamp with a beginner series video for you and I'm going to show you a few things you can do with the Misty. I have my two Misties here to show you and the larger one, the original one, is six and a half inches by eight and a half inches. So you have a really good size working area in there. And then the mini Misty, which just came out recently, measures six by five. So that's also really perfect for card making. Uh, I wanted to show you a few things about the magnets. These are really super strong and I have broken several from letting them clash together. And so I have seen some people do this and I thought I would show you how to do this. I'm going to put washi tape on mine. I have torn a length of my washi tape and I'm just wrapping this right around the magnet. But for the one end, I'll go ahead and move this out of the way so I can show you. For one end, I want to leave a little tail. And this will help me to have a little handle. So when I need to separate these magnets, because they are super strong and they just find each other. So I want a little tail that I can use. I can lift that up off my board here and place it back down. So I can move those around really nicely. So I'm going to go ahead and wrap up both of my magnets and that will help me to use my MISTI just a little bit better. Okay, now that I have my magnets all set up, I want to show you the grid pads that Simon Says Stamp has. And this is a pad of grid pads and you're just going to use one sheet at a time. We have those for the regular MISTI and also the mini MISTI. These are used for aligning your stamps. So I also want to show you the foam piece that comes within each of the pads. So when you're using a cling mounted stamp, you're going to remove the foam. And if you're using clear stamps, you're going to go ahead and use it with the foam. The Misty is designed as a stamp positioner. So once you put your image in there onto the board, it stays in place and you can do multi colors or you can also, if you don't stamp very well, you can stamp again. So I am going to go ahead and place a piece of paper in here. This is just regular white card stock and I butt it up to the bottom right corner. Um, I use mine left handed. I'll just I'll say that. So if you were doing it the other way for a right handed person, you'd have it the other way. But I put the image down and then I shut the door and then I open the door back up and my stamp is in place. So I'm going to make sure that nothing's shifted around and I'm going to go ahead and stamp this cake with a light yellow ink. And I'm just going to go ahead and ink that up a few times. And it's really best if you work on a nice flat surface so you can get a really good inking. So I'm going to go ahead and close the door and then just with my fingers I'm going to push down right in that area of that stamp. And now I can lift the door and I have my image. I want to add a little darker edge um, just to make it look a little bit rounded. So I'm just going to apply a little bit darker ink color just to one side of that and I'm going to go and add just a little bit to the other side. So I have my ink pad kind of tilted up in the air just a little bit and I'm just tapping that slightly. Now that I have that ink on there, I can go ahead and close the door. My Everything's going to stay right in place where it was. I'm going to make sure it's just pushed up to those edges and again I'm going to go ahead and press down. So this gives me a second impression where I can add a little bit of depth to an image by using two colors of ink. Next I'll show you why that grid pad is so handy. Even though it's a clear stamp, I still have a problem with lining things up really perfectly. But going ahead and looking through the stamp with that grid underneath, I can go ahead and shut the door. And next I can just do a test run before I actually put my cardstock in there to make sure that it's lined up. There's nothing worse than doing your artwork and you're going to go ahead and add your greeting towards the end and you stamp it crooked. So I'm going to go ahead and do a test run and I'm going to stamp right onto that grid paper. Now I can inspect how it's going to look on my card. If I need to do any adjustments, I can do it now before I stamp on my actual note card. So I'm going to go ahead and slide this in here just to show you how you can go ahead and use the grid paper under your cardstock if you want to as long as your ink has dried and then you're going to go ahead and just re-ink that up make sure that you're all the way into that corner and then you can stamp your greeting so there we have a really perfect stamped image 
Another way to use the Misty is with die cutting. And I have a leaf here from this set and there is a stamp that goes with it, but the leaf has engraving in it or embossing, so the leaf is a solid leaf. Well, it's nearly impossible to stamp and then try to line it up with a solid die. So what I've done is I die cut the leaf into my cardstock right there and I have that little hole. Now I can just go ahead and place my stamp right into that void area and line that up and you can look through and find the edges of that die cut piece because it's slightly larger than the leaf but once I have that in place I can go ahead and press that down. Now I have my leaf in place and I can go ahead and put the leaf right back into the hole and I can ink up my stamp and once that's well inked I can go ahead and close the door and stamp right on to that little piece that's already been die cut. And finally I'm going to show you a really quick way to use your cling stamps with the Misty. So I have removed the foam padding since it's a thicker stamp so I'm going right onto my grid paper and the base of the Misty. And so I'm going to go ahead and pick out a flower and I'm going to do a really quick ghost stamping. Okay, now I have my cardstock secured with those magnets and I've figured out where I want my stamp. Now I've just inked this up with fog ink and I'm going to shift my cardstock up just slightly where it's even up from the bottom and over from the side. And now I'm going to go ahead and stamp this down. I'm a CPR stamper, so I don't know why I give big rubber stamps and cling stamps the old CPR uh, treatment, but I do. It's just old habit. So now I have a dark image of my flowers. Now I'm going to scoot my paper right back down into that corner, and I'm going to wipe up my stamp really quick, get that fog ink off of there. And now I can go ahead and ink this up with some white ink from Simon Says Stamp. And I'll just tap this on, and it's really nice because you can really see how well you're inking up your stamp, especially with the white. You want it really solidly covered. So now with that paper scooted back down, I'm going to go ahead and press this down once again, and I'm going to get this really nice ghost image. So with that fog being first, it's a little bit darker, and it gives it just almost like it's lifted up. So that's a really fun thing that you can also do with your Misty. So I hope I've given you some helpful tips and tricks and also some information on the Misty. And as always, thanks for watching.